Good morning. Welcome to day 23, Monday, March 12th. We've been hiking about an hour and a half from Cosby Knob Shelter. Had about 13 people in the shelter last night. When we got there, there were four people, all through hikers. They had all started earlier than us. Uh, either a week or two weeks. And then, then a, uh, a couple came in on the spring break. Then another pair of through hikers came in, young guys. They started about a week after us, so doing 20 plus mile days, ultra light looking gear. And then another couple came in on spring break. And then another couple of through hikers came through and started about a week behind us, doing big mile days, ultra light equipment. So all together, about 13 of us in there, which I'm usually not very happy about because I'm just not a crowd person. I like having my space, privacy in my tent. But everybody was nice for no issues. And once it got dark, the last two guys that came in, they were fixing their dinner and they were talking kind of loud it was still early it was like probably 8 30 but i put my earplugs in didn't have any issues with noise the rest of the night so it was a warm night i had my water bottle out there was no ice in it at all this morning but after i got up at six and went out and started making my breakfast. The temperature dropped and it started snowing and the wind picked up. And by the time we got started, the feet, fingers were numb. But, and all my stuff was, even though I was under the little awning of the shelter there, all my stuff had the light dusting of snow on it. Kind of similar to what you see now. But got everything packed up, got started at 7.50, I was expecting downhill to Davenport Gap. But of course, Smokies had different plans for us, they made us do a couple of climbs, and the reason I didn't start filming until now, because it was just too cold and windy for me to film but we finally got over that last little peak the start of the descent into Davenport Gap so I think the last sign we passed I think it said 5.2 it was the turn off that goes up to the fire tower which we didn't go to because obviously we wouldn't have been able to see anything but a fire tower shrouded in clouds so other than Albert Mountain we haven't had a fire tower yet that was worth trying to get a view so as I said the, the temperature dropped right at daylight and now I have uh, ice forming in my water bottle that I'm carrying on my shoulder strap. So the plan is to go to uh, Standing Bear, and which is 11.2 or 11.4 for the Cosby Knob, and Ringo needs to get some resupply. We want to check the weather, and if it's going to be really cold tonight, we're just going to stay there. And then we're pretty sure we can get to hot springs within two days. There's the wind I was talking about.
Okay, before the wind blocks out my voice, let me just say, reboot, heading north. So just as another testament to the original builders of the trail, you're coming down, there's this big rock here, which, and then the trail is fashioned through that breaking the rocks, but they had to break through that rock to get the trail through here. And when you come around here, there's more rock. But they took that rock and they made this wall. I just think that's so cool. It's hard to see with the snow on it, but it's probably eight courses high right there with stone. It's just more of the rock they had to break through. Get a better shot from this side. Oh, yeah. There you can see the wall better. A lot of work. It's 11:20, and Gut Hooks is telling me that we are one tenth of a mile from Devonport Gap which is the border of the Smoky Mountains National Park. So, finally getting out of the Smokies. It's a good feeling. We knew the Smokies were going to be tough. We knew we might get hammered with weather. And we did. So right down here is the, uh, the box where the southbounders put their permit in. So, Smokies, you were cold, and you were creepy, but I am done with you. It's quarter after 12, and we've come out to the Pigeon River, getting ready to cross under I-40, and pretty soon after that we'll take the cutoff for Standing Bear Hostel. So, this is going to be the wrap-up for day 23, because we're staying overnight there. This is another river that I've paddled a few times. In much warmer weather, but it's a pretty fun river. That's the same class as in Anahalem. The water's a lot warmer there. It's dam controlled. There's a power plant right upstream there. it up for day 23. Looking forward to some dry, warm accommodations for standing bear. So 
when that happens, it'll be all good in the woods.